Hi, I'm Grace. This is my husband, Bill. Hi, I'm Bill. Oh, I'm supposed to. <laughs> I thought my shirt made it clear my stance on vlogging. This video is just to let everybody who subscribed to her channel, not my channel, her channel, what we're going to be doing in the new year, uh, just as January is, I don't know, a couple days away. Uh, so we're going to get into some of our preparations, some of our gear changes, our start date for the Appalachian Trail 2021. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm Filipino and my husband Bill is an American veteran. We would like to share our experiences with you and hope we can be a blessing to you. When you see us in the outdoors, say hi and don't be camera shy. This is the Coffee and Ready channel. First off, I would like to talk about my Crown 2. I've tried it out with all my gears. Went around walking at the Upper Ground Reservoir. My base weight is 19 pounds. <laughs> I was having some backpack problems on our walk. Trying it out and the, the bag is rubbing on my back. Rubbing on the right here. <laughs> my lower back. My lower back right here. It's a little uncomfortable so what I did was I just made some adjustments on the straps. That helped a little bit. Bill says that if I packed it a little bit more even that's probably one of the problems too. So next time we would go out and about walking around with our backpacks, I will move my stuff that's inside my backpack and probably even it out a little bit more. If it goes a little bit longer doing that, I'd probably get some form of rash down there. I, I can already see it, so all I do is just adjusting my pack, adjusting the straps that's on my pack and stuff. And, and that sort of helped a little bit. Adding something on my med kit, I'm bringing a few doses of Imodium. It's better to have them than not to have them on the trail. Have a new pillow. Oh. This is my new Sea to Summit if you turn it around. pillow. My old one, the X bed pillow, is a little over six ounces. That's coming with me on the trail. With the phone case that I have, um, this cord doesn't fit through the phone case itself, so, um, but this one does. I got a case, it won't fit, so I got to use this one because it does fit. I... <laughs> My head net. It weighs less than an ounce. I believe. Since I will not be needing this on the trail, I will be leaving it behind, getting sent to me with the quilt once warm weather hits. I decided to leave one of the t-shirts that I will be bringing and a pair of shorts because <laughs> I don't need them. So I have my winter clothes. It's already been nine minutes. So I will be leaving a t-shirt and a pair of shorts together with my head neck getting sent to me while the weather starts warming up together with my 30 degree coat. Right, so you should be like, look, I had this whole giant lens cleaner system. It's like this big cap and this big bottle and it's like, I'm not bringing all that because it's just too big and dumb. I'll bring a little spray bottle like we get at Walmart for $1.86 and call it good. Okay, like he said, I put those spikes on bonds. Well, I don't know where they at. Okay. Well, okay. And here is an addition to our. I'll be bringing these. What are they called? Ice spikes. Ice spikes. Sure, that's, that works. People understand. So here's the deal. Um, I guess being a little overly cautious, uh, but it will be February, and by all counts, the Smokies could be nasty. Um, so these are literally coming only through the Smokies, and then they're gone. Her medium size weighs 11.7 ounces, uh, just a set if you take the whole packaging 
It's 16.1 ounces. These are like $20 product on Amazon, and uh, I don't think they're going to last long. I don't think they're going to be good, but we literally just need them for a couple weeks just to be safe, just because one slip and fall could end it all. Also, somebody actually recently posted something somewhere in some group about they got a set for Christmas and said, should I really bring them? And literally, like, the first 20 people or so that responded uh, said, hey, I've been through the Smokies that time of year. Hey, I live in the area. I use them all the time. You're not going to want to carry something heavy like that for long, but they highly suggested them for the Smokies. Yeah. Big Agnes demo. This is my pump sack from Big Agnes. I mentioned this in my gear video. But I don't think a lot of people are familiar with that, so I'm just going to show you how this works. So this fits this. So my wife happened to be a little bit vague in her gear video. She just mentioned that she had like an air pump or something. What she meant was she had a Big Agnes pump sack. Um, the pump sack is designed to help you inflate the air mattress a little better. We were going to go ahead and demonstrate that for you. So she was a little vague in her video and you know other people new to backpacking maybe they haven't come across it yet. So anyway there's an opening on the stuff sack and it inserts into the inflator side of your uh, air mattress. So what you do is you just clip them together tight like that. And you take this end of the stuff sack and you blow it full. And then that allows you to take all that air and put it into the, the, the sleeping pad. It's just that much easier. It saves you having to just blow into the sleeping pad over and over and over like it lets you concentrate it all in one location at one time and the thing is amazing i mean you can just see how easy and how much effort and uh, time it eliminates from blowing up your air mattress But literally, it, uh, we tested it out at Yellowstone. I blew up my air mattress while she used that. Um, she did get done about the same time as me, but she wasn't out of breath. Um, <laughs> the other good thing about this is by just putting ambient air in rather than blowing into it, into your air mattress, you're not putting all the humidity from your breath, bacteria, things like that, that may grow in here and get it funky. So actually that will help keep the internal uh, chambers of the air mattress cleaner longer um and it does take i want to say it took me like three-ish stuff sacks of air to fill up mine and then i just topped it off with a breath or two to get it to the right uh thickness later on um, the other cool thing too about doing this because we've been testing our gear outside in the cold um, if you blew it up with warm air from your lungs it would actually collapse as the air cooled down um, in cold weather using the pump sack uh, since you're already putting in ambient cold air, what your pad inflates to is what it will stay inflated to. It won't shrink down because of warm air cooling off. The Koto Paxi fanny pack that I will be bringing on the Appalachian Trail through hike. I said it's 1.4 ounces. That is totally wrong. The weight of this very fanny pack 
is four ounces. I'm gonna give the camera to Bill so he can do his gear update for you guys. So the Bishop's Pass, uh, that zero degree sleeping bag that I had kind of decided to try out is not going to come with me after all. I didn't even completely finish testing it out. I had one major and one dealable issue. Uh, the major issue was on a 23 degree night, I was sweating like crazy. I couldn't even get to sleep in it. Uh, I just figured that zero degrees is probably not going to happen enough to justify sweating. 90% of the nights I'll have it. So I'm going back to my UGQ quilts that are underneath all of this. I think worst case scenario, I'll add a bag liner to uh, keep myself and my stuff inside. That was my issue with them. Problem number two is I didn't get in that bag when I bought it, and I didn't realize it's not exactly wide enough for me. Um, I just fit. I don't think it's so tight that I crush down the down in the shoulders, uh, but it's too snug. I can't reach down to put on, take off socks, any other layers at night. So now that I'm bringing both, let me explain my system. I told you before the red one is a 30 degree quilt. It's also got a tapered cut, which means down at the foot box and kind of cut in like a V shape. Let's just put it that way. Whereas my blue one, the 40 degree, is cut straight just like any old blanket or quilt that would be on your bed. The rationale behind that, when I combine the two quilts, the foot box of the 30 degree and 40 degree would not get crushed down inside of each other. Because if you lose the loft and the down, then you lose the insulation and your feet would just end up cold. Going back to the UGQ quilts, like I said, I could get like a really super light bag liner because before I mentioned my phone, my Sawyer, things like that falling out, uh, my arms sticking out. Um, there's actually one other thing I totally forgot. There's snaps up at the head end. And I don't even know why I forgot this when I mentioned my arms coming out before. But uh, I started using this. I get a little claustrophobic, whatever. Um, but I was actually not too uncomfortable. Anyway, snapping the snaps together around my neck at the end of our Yellowstone camping experience. And it more makes the bag like a, or the quilt like a cocoon that kept everything inside. So I've actually kind of eliminated one problem. There's a lot of stuff out here. Uh, moving on. So I didn't bother putting them out, but I am leaving a t-shirt and a pair of shorts that will get sent to me with summer stuff. So I only have one t-shirt, one pair of shorts, which is probably more than enough. I did put this one out. This blue shirt was eight ounces, eight point something ounces. That's getting left behind. I have enough warm weather clothes. I've decided that I can cut one of the three long sleeve shirts I had. So I'm going to cut this one. It's my least warm and my least favorite out of them. The wool one is great for obvious reasons. It's also warmer than this. And my gray zip up is just really warm and comfy and uh, it's loose enough it fits over things well. Like my wife, I got these crampon things. Um, yeah, they're not a high quality brand. I'm not expecting them to last me a lifetime. I just want them for safety precautions in case there's ice on rocks because I don't want to fall and break something that might uh and my through hike so right after the smokies these are coming home but the nice thing is just leaving that shirt at eight point something ounces pair of shorts at around four ounces i think it was 4.4 ounces and a shirt at 3.2 is actually one ounce i think more these were it's give or take the weight of these let's just put it that way these were like three points 13.6 ounces about the case which is not coming i did not mention my bug net before head net uh, like my wife, that'll get sent with my summer stuff, but did just want to mention that, yes, I am bringing one. Pack cover, I totally forgot that previously. Liner socks, um, I've not had a blister issue in years, but just for safety's sake, as far as blisters are concerned, I'm bringing these. But more so just for an added layer inside my shoes when it's colder out. I know it's not going to make a world of difference, but... It's better than trying to cram two pairs of wool socks into shoes they won't fit, then your toes are crunched up, then they don't move, then it defeats the purpose. Not certain on this yet, but it's a it's an idea. So here's my thing. I do notice a lot of people utilize their water bottle holders, water bottle sleeves for other purposes. And I'm thinking of maybe giving that a shot too, you know, keeping some snack. I don't know, you know, just I'll try various things. So anyway, the idea behind a collapsible water bottle is two things. Number one, I'll have it when I need it. 
and it doesn't have to take up a water bottle sleeve if I don't want to. Uh, and number two, I do like to use especially the iced coffee more so than maybe lemonade or other beverage powders. This gives me an option for that. If I want a nice coffee, great. Fill it up, make a nice coffee, rinse it out, put it away when I'm done. If I don't want it, it's put away. Amazon leggings, uh, again, I'd be, they've mostly been great, but sometimes the wind just seems to go through them. Uh, really humid, really breezy, cold days, they didn't hold up. So I did opt for some 250 weight smart wool leggings. Yesterday was like 32 and sunny and I was almost too warm. Uh, so that's actually a good sign. My gravity feed system. So I decided somewhere between when I shot the gear video and now uh, that I like a gravity feed system. Hiking a Different Path YouTube channel, I noticed he used a tornado coupling. I went ahead and I'm giving that a shot and I like the idea. Do look his video up since I gave him a plug, but just a quick breakdown. He's a little more scientific. He went ahead and did some timing and testing and explains why he thinks what works best works best. I'll spare you that and lead you to him in case you want to see it. The tornado coupling is this yellow thing here. Got that. Obviously, it you disconnect this from your Sawyer. You connect the Sawyer to the tornado coupling on one end, your water bottle on the other. I will hang this from a tree and voila, I will now have a gravity feed system. I didn't mind squeezing the C-Knock bag and I'm not in a hurry, but sometimes it would just be nice to hang this up and let the water drip down while I take off layers, grab a snack, go to the bathroom, whatever else. Discovered these are the cheap ones at Amazon. I think it was a 10 pack for six bucks, seven bucks that I got. You'll see these two are significantly different. Well, that's because I don't know how well you can see inside. I think it does show up, but uh, there's a little extra plastic there before the threads. I'm sure they fit on two liter water bottles fine because that's what they're meant for, but they would, I would not go on my uh, Sawyer or my water bottle there. So I took them out to the shed and uh, I used a coping saw to cut off a little of that material. Probably just about an eighth inch, three sixteenths of an inch on either end, somewhere in there. They work fine. So I went ahead and cut an extra one for my wife and another one for the pack. If you do this, make sure you don't cut into the threads. Otherwise you ruin it. Didn't mention these. Somebody commented like, hey, it's a good idea. And they're absolutely right. And we do have my wife got these like 50 percent off um a whole bunch of packs of these they were last year at walmart like i said 50 percent off so we stocked up yeah i'll have like two of these coming with i mentioned before i have the nalgene bottle to use as a hot water bottle it's a great idea but at the same time using gas canister stoves unless you do some of the hacks which you can look those sometimes up sometimes those don't work very well in cold weather you're trying to warm the can up shake it this that or the other so just you know if it's zero degrees and I'm in a hurry and I'm extra cold and I'm out of fuel or running low of fuel, I can pop one of these obvious reasons. I'm gonna hike in the Ultra Lone Peaks. My take on Ultras is they fit my feet better than anything else. I've tried Topo, I've tried on Solomon's, tried on some others that people have suggested and they're just, they don't have the wide enough foot box that accommodates my mangled up feet. However, I don't like how flimsy ultras are. The cushion seems to wear out fast. The shoes seem to wear out fast. If they weren't so comfortable on my feet out the box, I would not hike in them. Let's just put it that way. But they fit me great and I can't complain. I'm hoping that the Ultra 5s have a little more padding in them, more like the Timps. Uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, my trekking poles, Carbon Cascade Canyon Tech on here somewhere, 40, 45 bucks at Amazon. Um, so far, they've held up great. Used them a bit of hiking. I've taken a fall. I landed on them. Uh, I've got them wedged in rocks. They haven't broke, shattered, nothing like that yet. No cracks. I'd be an idiot not to bring them because, well, my tent is the z Pax Triplex and it relies upon them. So no trekking poles, no tent, unless you want to cut sticks and that or the other. Uh, as of now, that's all the uh, things about my gear that I'm either changing or not. I don't know if my wife will put this in the video or not. I'm contemplating selling that. It's a almost $300 pack I got for 140 bucks. I would happily sell it for, let's say, 110 plus shipping. Yeah, look up the Bishop's Pass uh, Zero Degree bag online if you're interested. It's the Men 650 Left Regular. There it is in the center. Just like that.
I can always cut it up. Can you move a little bit over here? We will talk about... It's weighing the 19 pounds. Oh. It weighs it's a scale. <laughs> That's what it says. The bag is rubbing into my back. The bag is rubbing <laughs> into my back. Unfortunately, though, with the case I'll be using, uh, this cord won't fit. My... Like, I will be leaving. She's going to leave all her shirts at home. This should be an interesting hike. One of, of my t-shirts. I'll will be leaving a t-shirt and be, a pair of shorts. I will be leaving. Right here. Do you want to do your gear? This is um, going to up. I'm going to do this all wrong. And then you're going to be like, no, that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. Just like that. Just like that. That's not all we were going to talk about anyway, but...